The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Very happy to have you here with us. We've got a lot to get to when it comes down to the NFL, the Combine. Uh, guys, you know, trade in, kind of trade rumors anyways. We've got a lot to get to when it comes to that. And, of course, a little bit of NBA news. We're going to jump over to the NHL and talk a little bit about the MLB because the season's starting to get there. We're getting pretty close to baseball season. Uh, I guess some could say we're already in baseball season. You know, I know Blake feels that uh, quite a bit. Before we get into everything, I want to start off by bringing in my co-host. First, we got the man from Sioux City. Uh, we got Jeremy here with us. How you doing, Jeremy? Doing pretty good. It's been uh, a long week already, and it's only Monday, but we got to push through it somehow. But we definitely got a lot to talk about, like you obviously mentioned, Josh, and just not trying to jump into the, the full swing, but like you said with the NFL, um, one big thing that's always on my mind is it's always on my mind. It's what the heck is the Chicago Bears really going to do? And now this is the even bigger topic for what the heck they're even going to do. Then jumping into the NHL, there's been a lot of talk for the trade deadline. And there's a whole lot more, guys. So just stick around and you'll see the see the rest of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah, there's a ton going on. It's it's funny how even in the off season it feels like it's even busier. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also got the man from Mobile, Alabama himself, Blake Lane, back on with us. It feels like it's been a minute, man. How you been? I've been doing good. Uh Glad to be back. So a lot of stuff going on in the sports world, brother. So uh, I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to like narrow everything down and try to cut down some of the news that maybe not, maybe isn't quite as relative when this comes out. And like, man, like there's a whole bunch going on. So it's gonna be fun to try to try to find what to touch up on and what to ignore because it seems like there's just a never-ending list right now. Like all kinds of new trade rumors or you got you know things with the combine and all that kind of stuff we'll touch on it all and we'll get there but before we do first got to mention an amazing sponsor of ours and that is seat geek because we love seat geek so much uh, and we use it all the time uh, anytime that we're, we're getting going to an event we make sure that we use seat geek and that is the official partner here of rising to the occasion because if you're a fan of events whether it's sports or music or theater or even comedy shows uh, you can you know how challenging it can be to find the right tickets at the right price and finding the right place to find them that's where SeatGeek comes into play with a seamless mobile experience SeatGeek allows you to buy and sell tickets in just two taps it doesn't get any simpler than that but it gets even better because SeatGeek also grades every ticket from red to green to let you know if it's a good deal or not uh, and then it also helps you find the best seats that fits your budget. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can shop securely and with a complete peace of mind knowing that your tickets are going to be real. They're going to scan in whenever you get to the door. It's not going to be a scam. SeatGeek is 100% secure so you can trust them when you buy tickets. Now, we love SeatGeek so much that we've teamed up with them to get you an amazing offer. You can use our code R2TO. That's the letter R, the number 2, the letter T, the letter O. Use that at checkout, and boom, you'll get $20 off your next purchase. That's right. Just download the SeatGeek app or visit SeatGeek.com and pick out those perfect tickets. You enter that promo code R2TO, $20 off immediately right there in the checkout. And it's just such a seamless checkout when you use SeatGeek compared to some of these other uh, ticket purchasing apps and stuff like that. So go check them out, SeatGeek.com, or download the SeatGeek app today and use that code R2TO for $20 off. But guys, let's get into it because, like we've been mentioning, a lot to get to. We're going to start off with the NFL and everything that's been going on there. Uh, and there's, there's first I wanted to bring up this, uh, you know, this idea that I saw, and and I know they've been throwing this around for a little while, while, but apparently now it's actually being pitched as an idea to bring into it. Uh, and that's the, uh, the the competition committee, the NFL competition committee. They're trying to pitch the kickoff rule uh, and, and, a, and a total change to the kickoff rule to be the same kickoff rule that we saw in the XFL last season. Uh, and it was very odd. I had to look it up to make sure I got it right because I couldn't remember it. It, it just looked so much different. Um, so... The way that it the way that it was is the kicking team lines up at the opponent's 35 yard line, and then the return team lined up at the 30, so only five yards apart, with only the kicker and the returner uh, allowed to move until the ball is touched. Uh, so I mean, it was just a really odd way to kick off. But they're trying to do this to kind of cut down on injuries and stuff like that because the guys are only lined up five yards apart. I wanted to get your guys' idea, uh, kind of your, your ideas and your thoughts on this. I mean, Blake, we'll start off with you, man. I, I'm, not in, I'm not a favor of changing rules at all. 
let alone this one. I just think this this kickoff system just looks so weird to me personally. Lame. Lame. Uh, this. What a joke, man! Like, just just put flags on them by now. Like, like just take the pads, everything. Just let's line up, play seven on seven football. It's getting ridiculous. What are we even doing? Look, it's a gladiator sport, guys. It's a gladiator sport. If you don't want to play, then don't sign up. If you don't want to get concussions or torn ACLs or broken legs or whatever, then don't play. Period. It's a gladiator sport. You get paid all of that money to go out there and put your body on the line. Like, I don't know what else, you know. It's just, it's gotten to the point where every year it feels like we're trying to change a new rule or we're trying to do this or we're trying to play your safety and all of this stuff. Like, come on, man. It's just, uh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. We do things like this for player safety, right? And then we go on and we extend a season. Uh, like yeah. I just brought up, uh, you know, last episode, we were talking about how the, the NCAA is now wanting, or I guess the just college football is wanting to extend the playoff to 14 teams. So we're wanting to mm-hmm. extend extend the season. So make up your mind. What is it? Do you want to extend the season and put them at more at danger? Or do you want to change up rules uh, to try to take it out of it? I mean, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I'm not going to argue yeah. one bit. I just, I hate this kickoff system. I think... It, it causes less returns, uh, and it just looks so silly to me. But, Jeremy, your thoughts? I'm going to steal a punchline out of Blake's book. Buns. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, just leave football alone. I yeah. don't – like, I understand you're trying to do some situation for player safety. I understand that, but Blake said the best. If you don't want to get a bruise or if you don't want to hurt yourself – Either A, sit on the sideline and just be a hype man, or B, don't even show up. Just let football be and let us all just enjoy our favorite sport that we love to watch on Sundays. I mean, just there's nothing more I can say. Just leave the effing thing alone. Yeah, I mean, there's there's even been a lot of talks with different rules, and I'm sure we'll get into a closer college football season, but in college football too, and I'm just I'm tired of all the rule changes. I'm tired of having to change something up every year can we just leave them alone because guess what you you create new equipment you create uh new standards stuff like that and 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 you're you're saving guys by doing that injuries Mm -hmm. go down by you just creating new equipment or new technology maybe training the guys better uh there's there's so many different ways that we can we can be down injuries we don't have to do all this um but another one uh, i know this wasn't in the rundown that i sent you guys but kind of some big news, I guess, sort of big news. Uh, we kind of already knew it was going to happen, but it was official today. The Broncos notified the QB. Russell Wilson is going to be released after the league year, which is going to be March 13th. Uh, so I want to kind of get you guys' thoughts. What do the Broncos do now? Do they go after a guy in the draft? Or is there a guy maybe in free agency like Kirk Cousins, maybe even Baker Mayfield because he's not officially signed? Uh, there's a few guys out there, but uh, and, and maybe even try, try to make a trade for Justin Fields. Uh, so there's there's some guys out there. Uh, what what are your guys' thoughts on what the Broncos should be doing? I mean, Jeremy, you go ahead and kick it off. I mean, we all knew Russell Wilson was trash, but I mean, <laughs> that's the way that I see it. Russell Wilson, you can take the horse in Denver, you can ride on out, and you can keep the horse for all we care. Um, I would honestly just go some try and get a quarterback out of the tra- out of the um, out of the upcoming draft honestly like in my opinion get a young quarterback to where you can get him going in the right direction and get him into full swing and understand what you're going to be jumping into obviously from college to fo- to the pros now i understand this is going to be a big time jump but you see in the past some quarterbacks that that do get the opportunity to Get get going right from the get go, and they th- they make the most of it. So, in my opinion, I think you take a quarterback out of the draft and get as much reps as you can, and get him in the, through the preseason. And you don't have to fully play him every single quarter. I mean, you can still obviously give him some time to rest. But I mean, I would sincerely take a quarter a, a young fresh quarterback out of this upcoming draft, and I would run with it. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, Blake, there's a ton of new dudes out there, too. They got the 12th overall pick right now as it stands. So, I mean, you got dudes like Michael Penix that will probably still be on the board. Guys like your man, Bo Nix, that will still be on the board. Uh, and then in, oh, in, another, one that's, 
another one that's been getting a lot of attention apparently from the combine and from a lot of draft scouts is even spencer rattler uh, yeah. which personally i'm not sold i just didn't see the progression that i would want to be able to pick him first round but there's some guys out there apparently guys are high on him right now so i i, I will i will put him in the bunch but i mean what do you do if you're the broncos I th I'm with Jeremy. I think you got to go to the draft and draft the guy. And by the way, look, Russell Wilson, cheeks. All right, <laughs> just cheeks. Uh, well, I've never good. seen somebody benefit more off of a Hall of Fame running back and the Legion of Boom. So, uh, you know, good for him. Uh, go, you know, uh, enjoy whatever your, whatever the next city is with you and your hot wife and uh, – Whatever. Um, I just think he was a huge distraction, in my opinion, with wanting the, the office and all of that. And then hearing Marshawn Lynch saying that he never called him one time when they were teammates, so like away from the facility and all of that. Like just weird, man, weird stuff. And when the Seahawks turned it to, to Russell, it, it it went down the, the wrong direction. So, you know, kind of glad he's out of there, in my opinion. Uh, I think they got to go young, and I think they got to go to the draft and draft a a good quarterback because uh, this year there's some there's some guys that are willing, you know, that uh, you can take a take a chance on, like you mentioned, Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler. There's going to be some guys there, so uh, th this is a, a a pretty nice QB class, in my opinion, for you to take that chance. Definitely. Yeah, I would, I would say the only other one uh, ranked right up there with this QB class might have been like the 2018 when you had Baker and Sam Darnold, uh, Josh Allen. Uh, and I know Josh Rosen was another big one. You know, it was kind of mm -hmm. in the, the group. I feel like, uh, of course, Lamar Jackson. Uh, so there's some, some QBs in that draft class too, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some. But, uh, yeah, this is definitely a stacked one. So I think you can definitely go to the draft and, and get somebody – I do like the idea of Justin Fields because I'm not I'm not sold on Justin Fields as a bad quarterback. I'm not sold no. on it because I've seen the dude play. I think he's I think he's a solid quarterback. I don't think the Bears should get rid of him personally. But if you're gonna get rid of him, uh, then, and and the Broncos are looking, I think Justin Fields is a good guy to go get. I also think Kirk Cousins is another another good guy. But you still go and get somebody in the draft because you got Kirk Cousins to help coach him up. So uh, that that mm -hmm. that's that that would probably be my top move is to get Kirk Cousins in and then go and get some guy in the draft. But it sounds like Kirk Cousins is probably going over to Atlanta. So that, that kind of seems really like the most, that seems like wow. the most likely spot for him if he does hit free agency. So, hmm. uh, you know, and I, I, I like that that move. OK, for him. I, I think that fits. But we'll, we'll see. I think time will tell. You like that? I do just because of the, the, the new system, I guess. I, I don't I don't really know who else you put in Atlanta. <laughs> no, I was messing with you. You like that? Oh yeah, yeah, I got you. You like that? You like that? I was wondering yeah. if you're gonna catch on to that. Yeah, no, catch on it first. That's my bad. I should have uh, known that's the record. Good. That's good. Uh, see, I'm, I'm more. I, I think I'm more in favor of that one just because I don't want to see Baker go to Atlanta. Uh, I, I don't, yeah. I don't like Atlanta. Yeah. So keep him in Tampa. Yeah, keep him down there in Tampa. I think he's a good fit. But let's yeah. go over to the combine. Uh, you know, kind of the, some of these these draft, the the stuff that's going on in the draft. We just talked about Justin Fields. Uh, I, I want to kind of kick it over to you guys and see what your thoughts are. What do you do if you are Chicago? Do you stick with your 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 main gut? Yeah, I, I think the main storyline is you get rid of uh, J Justin Fields and you go after Caleb Williams. Is that your move? Uh, or possibly shake everything up and go and get a guy like Drake May, uh, who is also in the talks for being that, that top QB with Caleb Williams. Uh, or do you, you trade out and, and pick up another good guy, let somebody else pick up Caleb Williams, uh, however the case may be, or I guess the last option would be keep Justin Fields. Uh, Blake, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on what you would do if you're Chicago? Well, I think the I think the Justin Fields thing is over, uh, even though I don't think Justin Fields is the problem in Chicago. But I just think all of the uh, the hostility and the social media and all of that stuff that has been swirling, I, I just think it's over. I think it's done. I think it's dead. Get him out of there. Uh, and let him go start somewhere fresh, and hopefully he can resurrect his career. And, you know, I think he's a heck of a quarterback. I just don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's his fault in Chicago. I think their front office is just not ran the way it should be ran, and uh, I think they make bad decisions, and, um, you know, it is what it is. So if you're going to get rid of Fields, I think you got to draft Caleb Williams. Dog. 
absolute dog. Uh, I'm sorry, they can throw all the pre-draft narratives and he paints his fingernails and he's uh, turning down medical exams and he's not throwing at the combine. Guess what? I don't care. I watched him live in action. I was in Eugene, Oregon when he showed up to Autzen and my buddy is an absolute dog. All right? He's a dog. He yeah, he yeah. does he does things on the football field. <laughs> he makes throws that that night I was sitting there going, "Oh my goodness, no way." You go back to the Red River, all right? When he come in that day, he's special, bro. He is special. Well, it, it, there's there's one play that always sticks out in my mind with Caleb Williams at Oklahoma. And of, of course, the, the Red River was it was iconic. The way that he turned the game around, and it was really him. I mean, you can't you can't say it was anything else other than him. But against Kansas, when Kennedy Brooks is stopped as as soon as he is, his momentum stops forward, Caleb Williams rips it out of his hands, and, and just the 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 acknowledgement from Kennedy Brooks to let go of the ball, let him have it and then go off and get your first down on a fourth down, a very crucial fourth down in that game when Kansas was fighting with everything they had to keep Oklahoma from scoring no more time so that they could be in the game. And, and he ends up basically winning it off that play. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, there's there's plays like that just nonstop. And, and you can think of a ton of them over there at, at USC since he went over there that he is a highlight reel. And so he's, he's absolutely a dog, but there is a little bit of, of, of worry with the drama, I think, in my mind, with Caleb Williams. Yeah. You know, there's there's always a question mark, too. Is he going to bump up to the next league or, you know, up to, up to the next level? I get it. And, like, all the ownership stuff and wanting a, a stake in the team and all of that, I get that. Like, yeah, th that throws up red flags for me. But when I look at, like, on the football field, all these people out here, they're like, oh, Caleb Williams is trash. I'm like, stop. Stop yeah, no, right now. Like, I, I don't want to hear that. Bro, I, I saw him make a throw in Eugene on a on a on just a 10 out and just absolutely deliver a cross hash to the, to the opposite sideline. And I said, hey, this dude right here is a dog. Like, that's an NFL throw, bro. Like, it's nasty. I also seen him escape the pocket – and he's almost to the line of scrimmage. He sees his his receiver. Uh, he works back away from <clears throat> away from the boundary, and he catches slight daylight of being open. Caleb Williams tosses that thing over his head, just ugh, completes it first down. And I was just like, "What? Like this dude's Houdini?" You know, like. And, and a lot of people hate the Patrick Mahomes comparison, but the reason why that's a comparison is be it's it's not because of anything outside of this. It's the simple fact that Patrick Mahomes makes stupid plays look good. Caleb Williams does the same thing. That's yep. that's the comparison. And a lot of people mm -hmm. blow that out of, out of proportion too. Oh, you know, you can't compare there there's certain comparisons where it's just a comparison for this one this one reason and that's it for for Caleb Williams and and Patrick Mahomes. He is he's he's a game changer uh and I, I don't think his talent is what keeps me out of it. It's just the drama that goes around him. It seems like that yeah. drama is really built up in college leading into the draft. And then, of course, like you mentioned, too, uh, him denying medical exams and, and even denying his medical records to teams, uh, to most teams anyways, not all of them. Um, but maybe that's just because he didn't want to go to those teams. So, no, I'm, I'm going to throw up the red flag to you, and I don't want to go there. But well, uh, Maybe I, I he knows he's not going there. there. Maybe he knows he's not going there. Yeah, yeah. There's not a whole lot of information given about that either. So that's one of those things I don't want to read too far into it, but it's out there. But, yeah, Jeremy, what about you, man? What, where, where do you go if you're Chicago? Do you stay with the man you've got, or do you wait and, and, and get somebody here in this upcoming draft with that number one overall pick? I would honestly just stick with what you – I would honestly stick with getting Caleb Williams as, as number one. Like As Blake mentioned, this dude is literally putting up highlight reels and if you're gonna if you're gonna doubt Caleb Williams and down him, I don't think you've been watching the right game, dude. Like Caleb Williams has been putting up really good points and really good numbers just looking at this overall season, especially this year. I I don't know his exact like total yardage or total uh, total anything honestly off the top of my head, but I can guarantee you it's damn good. And like Caleb Williams, he. My only thing is, I know we've seen in specific games, Caleb Williams has lost a little bit of his temper, 
but I I understand that you're gonna have those moments to where you just want to be completely upset and that's okay. I mean, you look at the NFL. I mean, look at Lamar Jackson, for example. You know how many times that man has came off the sidelines and slammed his helmet and said things that we cannot repeat on just, air? Just know you can't go cry to mama when you make it to the NFL. That's, that's, that's no, the thing. That's no longer, you can't go cry to no mama. That's no longer a thing. That's no yeah, longer a thing. You can, you can go get a hug from mama, but you can't go crying. But, yeah. I mean... I think you you need to stick with getting Caleb Williams in the, in this upcoming draft. And if you don't, I think it's just going to be a complete dumpster fire for Chicago. Can I can I add something real quick? Go yeah, go ahead. One thing of why I've always been in the Caleb Williams corner is when he went to USC. They don't have a defense, and Man. so. Caleb was having to go out there. Everybody's like, oh, he's a showboat. You know, he's all about himself, the the nail painting against Utah and everything. Whatever, he's a confident kid, all right? I don't, I don't want to hear all that, you know. He, he, he just – that's how he plays the game, all right? He had to go out on the field every Saturday to try to put up 60, all right, because he knew if he didn't, they were probably going to lose. And Trust me, there's there's nobody that supports that that guy and that before uh, that reason than me because he literally went to my school and my school was the team that had to do that. Uh, yes, we lost, we lost playoff games because we had to try to score sixty and we could only get fifty eight. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I mean it's 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 tough to criticize a dude for losses. I don't like when you so like Jaden Daniels. We talked about that. It sucks to criticize him for losses because he did put up the numbers. He put mm-hmm. up he put up the points. And I don't want to criticize him for the losses. And, and we even came on here and said it wasn't for the losses. It's not just because of the record, but it's also because of things that, you know, so Caleb Williams lost quite a few games this last year. But you still saw those Heisman moments from him. You still saw those moments where he went out there and put the game on his back, his entire team on his back. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. And, and I, I do stand with you guys. I think you have to go after Caleb Williams if you're, if you're the Bears. Although I wish they would stick it out with, with – uh, Justin, Justin Fields. Fields, but yeah, I, just like you said, Blake. I think with all of the kind of drama going around it, you've gone too far now. Uh, personally, I, I yep. think it's just time for Justin Fields to move on rather than the Chicago Bears to move on. I think they moved yep. on a little too fast, uh, and I don't. Great I don't. I, I think. I think they're going to see him move on to a new team, and he's going to start winning with whether it be with the Steelers or Atlanta or wherever he ends up going, uh, and he's going to start winning games, and then they're going to realize they let a good thing go. Uh, and so, you know, I kind of hope that is the case just to rub it into the Chicago fan base. Um, but I, I want to talk a little bit about the combine with you guys. There's a lot of things going on. You had a, Xavier Worthy uh, recording that. Four, what was it? A four, four, four two, four, two, four, two, two, yeah. right? Four, two, two. Yeah, four, two, two. Yeah. yeah. He, he ended up beating uh, Ross by, by point oh two. Uh, fastest 40 time. You had that going on. Uh, of course, you had a lot of other uh, things, you know, with with. In maybe QBs specifically not performing or performing well. A lot of big guys running fast 40 times. But I wanted to kind of take a step back and just look at the combine as a whole. How much stock do you guys put into the combine? If you're a scout and you're looking at these guys in the combine, are you basing a whole lot of your opinion on this guy based off the combine? Uh, in some things, yes. Uh, in certain drills, yes. I think it does matter. Um, but watching a quarterback go out there and no pads and throw a deep ball and, uh, no, I don't, I don't care. I want, I want to watch game film and, uh, that's what I think you should really get into the film room and watch and study these guys before you make a draft pick. I think the, I think the combine is just maybe for the, the underrated guy who, you know, might be coming from, uh, you know, an FCS school or something like that and, you know, might want to get his name out there. But, look, everything's been everything's been on tape. You went to the Senior Bowl. You did your thing there, majority of those guys at the Combine. Uh, you've, you've had all eyes on you, you know. And, and so I think, yes, yeah, some drills um, that, yeah, I think you should pay attention to it. But uh, just because you run a 4-2-2, uh, doesn't mean, you know, John Ross, look at him. He didn't have – just because you're fast don't mean you can play in the NFL. So, I mean, it's just – Well, and they even did a comparison to uh, – I know it was Blake Corum, and I'm trying to think of who the other guy was. It was two running backs. 
uh, and it was you know the, the one dude had a, had a faster 40 time and then they put them both compare com, in a comparison on i'm drawing a blank on the on the name of the drill um but basically where the running backs have to make their their split decision and, and you know read the linebacker uh and so they have to either go left or right and they're, they're also kind of doing a little little more to the obstacles um, but it was just so obvious when you look at that because Blake Corum was a good five yards ahead of him um, at the end of the drill. But the, the 40, you're just running in a straight line. The, this, this drill shows like how you're able to overcome obstacles and, and how fast you are on the, on the, the cut. You know, Blake Corum, I think he's a dude because you watch how, how easily he transitions from going one way to changing directions. Uh, the, the dude can, can – he's a running back for sure. Um, See, so yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think there's certain certain uh, aspects of it that, that definitely line up to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy, are you in a different boat? You like the combine? You think the combine is where you put a lot of stock into? No, I, I mean, I liked watching the combine, but I 100% I agree with Blake. You can only do so much with certain cats, but it's one thing to watch them at the combine, but... It's a whole complete different situation when you watch them fully dressed and being able to say you can you can break his ankles and then make him make a quick pass on a dime, but unless you got a three hundred plus pound lineman coming at you and making that split decision, I won't put a whole bunch into it unless I physically see it on the field. Then I this is just a joke, obviously, according to sign. Congratulations! You you have, you now have the fastest time in in the NFL combine history. Running a four point two two. I wish I could. The only time I could run that fast is to go get a beer from the fridge. But <laughs> I mean, outside of that, like like I said, all jokes aside. But it's it's cool to see someone that can run a four two. But at the end of the day, you don't have a single person coming at you, and. If you did and you were still able to pull off that time, I'll eat my words. But until I physically see it, I'm sticking with I'm sticking with not putting much into it. So leave the combine for the fan experience, not for the yeah. scouts. That's what well, I'm you heard the getting. crowd after he did a four two two. They were all ecstatic. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. But I mean, at the same time, like we all said, there's nobody coming at him. Well, we knew we knew Xavier Worthy was a burner too. Like we knew mm -hmm. that's that was what he did at Texas, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and he's elite. Like he blows the top off the of defenses, and and you know, uh, we probably knew that was coming. Maybe maybe four two two, maybe not. But four, you know, we knew it was coming close to it. We knew he was going to put it up an impressive number. Uh, just yeah, like a four. It was like a four two seven or four two five right before that too in his first run. On some but that, they, were, they were waiting for it. Yeah, that's the thing is like, uh, you know, it's cool and all, but um, I, I think it can work for like a guy, a guy like me, Jalen Simpson uh, from Auburn. I think the I think the combine can work in his favor to show off his vert, uh, the third highest vert for a safety. Uh, I think he had like the third fastest 40 for a safety and things like that. I mean, I think certain things help, but at the end of the day, I think it comes down to tape and what you would put on film and those guys really get in there and dissecting uh, how you play your position. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely certain uh, certain drills that, that you, can, you can totally look at and take something away from it as a scout. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. I think you said it pretty well, Blake. Um, let's jump over to the NBA because we had some big news. One of the greatest of all time. I won't say that he's the greatest. Uh, I think there's there's too much against him for that. But one of the greatest, uh, if not possibly even the second greatest of all time, the first player to 40,000 points. LeBron James hits 40,000 points the other day. Uh, and, and just an, an, an amazing career. Uh, and, and I've never doubted his his playing ability. It's not the fact that uh, I, I don't like him. It's nothing of that. It's just there's certain antics that I don't like from him. I, I don't like uh, – I, I don't think he it, – it, it's not to say that he doesn't grind. I just don't think he grinds as hard as guys like MJ and Kobe. And uh, there, there's a lot of others that can kind of be put into that, that camp. But absolutely one of the greatest and amazing accomplishments. So I don't want to sit here and cut the man down. Uh, 40,000 points. Congratulations to LeBron James. Uh, what do you guys think about LeBron hitting that 40K mark? We'll start off with you, Jeremy. Hitting, it's one thing to hit a thousand points, 
but you go and completely blow that out of the water and hit 40k. First things first, obviously, congratulations, LeBron. It's been a pleasure to watch you do you on the court. And obviously, like you said, no one's ever done it before. And if I was a young kid in college and seeing LeBron putting up 40K in points, this would definitely be a big thing to look up to, whether you're a three-star athlete or even a five-star athlete. It doesn't matter the kind of effort or the kind of player that you are. It's the big the big thing that I look at is it's the heart of the person that's that's willing to put the effort into it and trying to get to that point to where I want to be – I want to become the next LeBron James. I want to put up this many stats. I want to put up this much of a of a of a game just in general. But being able to hit forty thousand career points and it it doesn't look like LeBron's going to be slowing down anytime soon. So I think we can easily see LeBron hit way over that. I'm, like I'm not saying he's going to get to like fifty thousand points because that's going to be look how long it took him to get to forty to 40,000, that took for forever, is what it felt like. Is He's been in the league for how long now, Josh? Do you know off the top of his head, off your top of your head? Uh, what, what was so this? What was LeBron? Was, yeah, yeah how long has he been in the league? He got drafted in uh, 03. Oh, 03. 03, okay, I was going to say yeah, like yeah. maybe 04 to 06, somewhere in there. I, but, I was, yeah, I was thinking 04, but I don't know why. But, I mean, still, just being able to hit 40,000 points in, in his shape and how he looks, we can definitely tell – Age is hitting him a little bit, but he's still going to be putting up unbelievable numbers, to say the least, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It was it was a lot of fun, Blake. I know you you're a big LeBron fan, so I can give you your time. <laughs> uh, yeah, on the court, huge LeBron guy. Uh, whatever he does off the court and everything, that's his business, and uh, you know, good for him. Uh, it is what it is. I don't really get involved with all of that stuff so um as far as the basketball player lebron james one of the most talented physically gifted specimens that we will ever see in our lifetime you can hate him you can love him you can hate him going to miami back to cleveland to la whatever um when it comes to a teammate on the hardwood he's one of the best ever when it comes to a leader, uh, I think he's one of the best ever. Uh, when it comes to basketball knowledge, he's one of the best ever. When you look at the Olympic game, he's one of the best ever. He got the United States team to really buy in, and he went after Kobe Bryant to get the Redeem team put together, and they wanted to, to take the Olympics and – uh, the FIBA uh, Confederation, they wanted to get back serious with Olympic basketball in the United States to be taken uh, with with respect, and he was a big part of that. So uh, I'm always in his corner for that part. And I just think he, got, he has a great gift to play basketball, and he's one of the best – to ever do it he's one of the greatest of all time he continues to work on his game he continues to hydrate his body and take care of himself at his age he's 39 years old and still jumping like he's 23 bro like it's insane um it's it's uh it ha it hasn't ever been done before like it's incredible to even think about and he's just sometimes i don't think he's from planet earth I really don't like I, I think he's a Martian of some sort and he's from outer space and just was just sitting here. Uh, I saw him playing against aliens once, too, in this game. It was yeah. crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, didn't live up to Mike. <laughs> no, no. I, I felt like he didn't do nearly as good as MJ, though, against the aliens. MJ just he did not. blew him out of the water. Blew, yeah. 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 Space Jam Space Jam 2 was a bus, bro. It wasn't was, good. Yeah. It, was, it was buns. It was booty. Yeah. Too. There you sure. go. There you sure. go. Um, no, it's it's an amazing accomplishment, though. I don't want to take yeah. that away from him one bit. Uh, like you said, on, on the court, I, I will say one of the greatest of all time. I can't go as far as say <laughs> the greatest. Uh, too close for me to say that. But uh, one of the greatest and amazing accomplishment, though. One, one thing I'll say is this is such a big accomplishment for him because he was always considered a facilitator first. It was never – 
LeBron scoring first. It was always LeBron looking to find the open guy. LeBron making the best basketball play to find his teammates. LeBron always putting his teammates first. And he got to 40,000 points. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it had to do with him staying healthy and the longevity of his career. But LeBron is that dude, man. Like, he's incredible. And uh, any shot on the court, any moment, everybody's like, oh, he's not he's not clutch. Go look at the dude's career, bro. Like, his first seven years in Cleveland, dude was playing with McDonald's workers, bro. Like, I mean, what are we doing here? You, know, you wonder why he left to go to Miami is because Cleveland is trash. It's a terrible city. They sucked. Uh, he didn't have anybody. There's nothing to do there. Uh you know, and, and so who wouldn't want to go to South Beach and, you know, sit on a yacht with D. Wade every day and Chris Bosh and sip martinis on the water and all of that stuff in 100-degree heat, you know? Hey, sign me up, or would you rather sit in Cleveland, Ohio, where it snows all the time? And uh, sorry, guys, uh, but, <laughs> you know, that's just me. That's just me. So L.A. or Ohio, you know? Yeah, you know what? Out of just about any city – in Ohio, I will say Cleveland is probably the suckiest. So I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, I just I don't care for Cleveland. Maybe maybe you'd say Dayton. Uh, maybe Dayton's just below it. Dayton doesn't have quite as much, but still, uh, you know, just overall, Cleveland is is maybe second worst, uh, if not the worst, on in the big cities in Ohio. Um, I lived there for for long enough to be able to say that for sure. <laughs> but let's jump over to the NHL. Uh, Jeremy, you tell me that there's a lot of trade deadline updates to be had. Go ahead and give them to us. What are some trade trade deadline updates? There has been some big, big names that have occurred in the trade deadline. Like, I'm not going to jump to every single individual one, but I'm going to list off the top ones that, that at least caught my attention. First off, I'm going to start off with goalies, and the one that stuck out to me the most was a guy that we've heard a lot about by the name of Mark andre Fleury. Now, Mark Andre Furry, obviously, he's been he's been tearing it up in Minneapolis, trying to trying to keep the Minnesota Wilds playoff game alive. But you, they're obviously in the hunt. They're down in the bottom of the bracket, and I should say the bracket in the bottom of the standings. But the Minnesota Wild, they have been, in my opinion, they've been relying too much on Mark Andre Fleury to try and keep the games going for them. It's to me, their defense is not doing the their job their forwards are getting shots off but they're not making pretty good shots they're they're really hitting the opposite net above the goalie's head than trying to put it in the back of the the other real net but um mark andre fleury obviously if if it's not looking like leaf for playoff situation mark andre fleury is looking to go other places exactly where he hasn't exactly said just because obviously mark andre fleury is getting up there in age and he, this could easily be Marc Andre Fleury's last year, or he he could play for another two to three years, for all we know. But Josh, I'm gonna first a ask you if Marc Andre Fleury could be traded to any team. Is there a team that you could potentially see Marc Andre Fleury going to? I don't really have a, a team in mind, but I don't blame him one bit for wanting to get out of Minnesota. I mean. Not a, not a great place to be playing right now, is it? <laughs> I mean, I mean your, they're they're not doing so earlier in the season. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're you're kind of in that. We were talking about them a little while back. Like, you could make your way to the playoffs, kind of the way that Florida did last year, and claw your way into it. But uh, that's not really a position you really want to be in necessarily. So mm -hmm. you want you want to be on a team that you know, and and especially whenever you get that old, uh, you, you're just looking for a way to to win win one, man. Like you just you you want to win one, and and. If you've if you've already won one, you want to win another one. That's pretty much the entire goal yeah. of being in any professional sport. So I don't blame him one bit for wanting to get out of there and and move on to somewhere new. Absolutely, but I mean, Blake, even kicking it off to you, is there? I know you're not as big as a hockey guy, but I mean, <laughs> is there a place that you can see Mark Andre Fleury potentially um, landing if he gets traded? Man, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hey, at least you're being honest. Here. It's one of those things too. It's it's hard to get if if you're not a if you're not a diehard fan. It's hard to find the right moment to get into the NHL too. Yeah, but uh, it's because I, like 
like and, and I watch in the south too. So yeah, well, look, I'm from Mobile, Alabama. We don't have yeah. ice here. Um, <laughs> we never but see like, ice I, like, like indoors. <laughs> no, like I watch it and everything. Um, but I, I don't, I don't like you know follow the ins and the outs and where this guy might go or whatever. Like we got the Pensacola yeah. Ice Flyers here, dog. We got to go an hour to see hockey. Uh, but no, like great sport, love it. Uh, but I'm just, I don't, I'm not sure where he could end up. You know. I mean, if there's one place, this is a rumor, of course, because nothing's officially said yet. They were talking about potentially having Mark Andre Fleury land in Colorado. Now, in my opinion, I think that could that could be a pretty decent landing spot. Obviously, having yeah. McCarr, McKinnon, Nishkinen, then they, they having can use a lot a goalie of weapons. In the net too. I mean, especially a goalie with that that uh, caliber, and of course, they're they're the type of they're the type of team that could that could. You know, uh, they they could really excel with a really good goalie at net, especially whenever you get down to the playoff playoff time and you got a good goalie in net with all the guys around them. I like that. Uh, absolutely, but now I'm going to bump up to the defensemen. I mean, there's like I said, there's a lot of names, but I'm not going to list off every single one. But the one that kind of stuck a little bit out to me was Matt Dumba down in Arizona. Yeah. But I mean. We've all seen what Arizona has been able to do this year. It's been buns. It's been cheeks. It's been anything but good. I mean, literally, Arizona has been – this is a team that is literally chilling in the desert, and they have absolutely no life, in well, my we opinion. We've about them, too, man. They, they need to get out of there. Go to Kansas City. Go to Utah. Uh, go, go to go, Omaha. Go to Omaha. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we, we're big proponents of that. Go to yeah. Omaha for us. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, he – if you're if you're a good player and you go down, uh, so my one of my uh, uncle's best friends uh, is Jed Ortemeyer. He he played down in Arizona, uh, and I, I bet he would probably agree with this statement too. That if you're a good player and you get traded or you know get you you, you most of the time you're not going to sign with Arizona. Let's be real. Uh, if you get traded or pushed off over to Arizona, get your ass out. Get out of there. <laughs> I've heard from other professionals too that they're they have like the worst facilities. Uh, a lot of professionals list that up as as their their top as as the worst facilities, especially okay. for the away team. But the away team obviously always has terrible facilities. Okay, but the thing is, you look at their new arena. It literally looks like a straight up college arena. It, it doesn't even look like an it doesn't even look like an NHL arena. I saw the rendering. I thought that was a hundred percent worse. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> List list off some other some other guys. I mean, is there is there any that have been traded recently that you see? Uh, um, that have been traded not recently. It's still just a big mumbo jumble in the air, just because yeah. I know the trade deadline's the ninth, and they're trying. Knowing the NHL, they're kind of trying to get everything last minute almost. But other names that, like I said, I haven't mentioned. Um, Sean Walker with the Flyers, Nick Sealer with the Flyers as well. Um, Jacob, I mean Jacob. Tricom from the Ottawa Senators, um, like I said, Matt Dumba, Alexandra Carrier from the Predators, but um, now I'm going to be going into the forwards, and this is one that um, is, it's harsh, but just, but you look at what he's been through, it's Jake Getzel, and Jake Getzel has been lighting up the lamp when he's actually on the ice, but Jake Getzel has been fighting a lot of injuries, and it's been he's been fighting a lot of upper body injury, and he's lucky to maybe get back in into playing position maybe mid March. But I mean, he, I mean, he and he's only twenty nine years old too. I mean, Jake Getzel has a lot of life in him, but it's also one of those situations to where it's not just an NHL. You see this a lot in, in any professional sport. If you get in that injury bug, it's going to hurt you down the road really, really bad. Yeah, but, he's, he's been ridden with that for a little while now. Yeah, absolutely. But looking at other forwards, um, Adam Henrique with the Anaheim Ducks, um, Pavel Benovich with the St. Louis Blues, um, Vladimir Tarasenko with the Ottawa Senators. Um, Tarasenko Anthony... would be a very good, very good pickup. I, I, I was sad to see him leave New York. Yeah, he was a really good addition with New York. So it, I do agree. It Bring was him back. Of yeah, hey, you can never know. He could go back. want to go back to New York. Um, the Anthony Mantha with the Washington Capitals, I'm not too happy about that, especially the one that just been, had been talking about. Evgeny Kuznetsov could potentially be landing on the trade on the trade roster because his, he's waving waivers. So but, the deadline um, is this Friday too, right? On yeah, it's on, it's on the 9th. So, well, yeah. eighth at midnight, yeah. Okay, so the eighth at midnight, yeah. So I mean, that's 
it's coming up really close. So we're, we're going to see a lot of these guys finally start to find the team that, that they make a deal with, or some of them may not even, may not even yeah. leave. They may just stay there the rest of the season and, and close yeah. out the season uh, with their team. I mean, it's exciting time anytime, really in any professional sport, whenever we get down to that trade deadline, but mm -hmm. definitely keep your, you're, you're the hockey guy. So I need you to keep I'm your eye on, on top of the any big trades, make sure to throw them our way, man, because we, we definitely. definitely need to cover those. Uh, you named off a lot of big names, too, so it could be some big shakeups. Yeah, I'm sure there, might there be was other still guys some names I didn't see. list off, too. I mean, yeah, there hey. might be some other guys that we didn't see coming. Uh, so let's let's definitely keep an eye on that. But let's bit. go over to MLB. Uh, Blake knows better than any of us. It's baseball season already. Blake, you had a, an amazing weekend down there seeing your, your Auburn Tigers compete down there in Jacksonville. Uh, it looked like it was a fun weekend. So baseball season is here. And on top of that, they've got the training, uh, you know, the, the training camps going and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to first start <clears throat> off with you, Blake, and, and ask you because I think you would know much more about this than I would uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm still – I'm still like a, I can't say I'm an MLB virgin, but I'm definitely getting back <laughs> into it, you know. So, yeah. Uh, how much how much can you really learn from the spring the spring training uh, overall? Because it's 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 not the same as the N the NFL preseason, uh, or even like if you take college football like the the spring game or anything like that. So, how much can you take from the the, the spring training overall from the MLB? Okay, so spring training. Uh, is more about developing the young guys and seeing where they are at. And the older guys, it's more about just getting swings, getting your body uh, accustomed to just the rhythm of every day. You know, it's it's uh, just trying to see live pitching and everything for the older guys. But you're really wanting to see, like, the younger kids. Like, just take an Anthony Volpe for the Yankees. Uh, last year struggled a little bit. Uh, showed some bright spots for the Yankees, but struggled uh, in his rookie season for the most part. Uh, you want to see him take spring training serious, and you want to see him try to elevate his game, uh, have quality at bats, uh, really work on his fielding and everything like that. Like uh, go go make a play, and and you know uh, you want you want to work on like footwork and everything that he struggled with last year. Get those things down pat in spring training. But for guys like, you know, Shohei and all of that, your spring training is just kind of about the routine of it, you know. It's not a big uh, it's not a big deal to those guys because they know they're on the opening day roster. Those guys, the superstars know. It's more about the younger guys. So it's it's a little similar to uh to NFL preseason for the young guys. Yeah. Um yeah. Outside of that, you know, it's pretty pretty different i feel like because it's it's a lot more like you said kind of warming warming your body up if you're one of these guys that you know you're you're not really worried about breaking records or anything like that you're not yeah. trying to bomb it out of the park or anything just it's really not getting, those things, off getting yourself ready yeah. um so yeah. how how much can you take from it uh if, if your team's doing really well does that say anything to your season do you think i mean do you, do you ever see a pattern like that uh you want to you want to come out in spring training and do well <laughs> um if is it is it a measuring stick? Probably not, uh, because a lot of people, you know, uh, they run two teams and things like that. Like they they'll have a, a you know, there's different leagues and stuff like that. So like you got out west and and everything, and then you got down in Florida and Tampa and everything. Certain teams play down there, and so it's just kind of all spread out. So I mean, it's not like a a big deal you know at the end of the day um but you want to see positivity you don't want to go out there and be like the oakland a's and just be getting drummed every game so yeah they're I mean, terrible I guess, by the way because I, I keep on i keep on watching some of it and i can tell like there's a lot of guys like you mentioned a lot of the, the older guys just not into it uh, yeah you know and they're just they're they're there i mean they're they're definitely they're definitely putting some effort but not all they're uh, not all the effort into it uh, and then you know you've got other guys where it just seems like man they're trying everything they can, uh, and, and I can't really I can't really decipher between the two. But so far, I mean, when, from what I look at it, if you can take anything away from uh, the training camp, it looks like the, the AL East is still going to be pretty tough because I've been seeing a lot of the AL uh, guys like I, I'm seeing a lot, I'm seeing a lot of maybe higher scoring uh, from them. Uh, you know, and you're, you're seeing guys at bat taking advantage of it, uh, seeing seeing a lot of good things over there. I know for, specifically for the Red Sox, I've been paying attention to them. Just trying to trying to see who 
who looks like maybe they're gonna they're gonna jump up and, and be a big star because they didn't really make a whole lot of moves. Uh, I feel like yeah. last year they got Devers to come in, didn't make a whole lot. Uh, and then another team I've been interested in watching from the AL East specifically is your Yankees too to try to see because you know you it makes it makes some moves, but uh, how is it all gonna pan out in the end? How how is it gonna kind of go together when you get the team together on on the field uh, and how's it gonna look? Uh, so. It's 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 interesting. I think I think it's going to be an exciting year. The team to beat is the Dodgers. They put together the 100%. Avengers, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put together 100%. the Avengers. But but see, that's I, that's if I'm a Dodgers fan, that's what I'm most nervous about because now we've got the target on our back. Uh, everyone is going to expect us to do the best. So, and the Braves are your kryptonite. So yeah, one hundred percent. And and yeah, the Braves the Braves are always going to be a good team too. They just picked up a dude too. Uh, do you know who it, who it was? Uh, I know they got Chris Sale. Um, they got uh, Jared Jared Kelnick from the Mariners. Um, there was one that I remembered seeing uh, pick up, and it just made sense. Was it a relief pitcher? Somebody? Oh, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. I don't know why I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But, uh, I mean, looking overall, I, you just brought up the Dodgers. Outside of the Dodgers, and I think obviously the Braves, uh, I, I kind of want to bounce back between all, all of us kind of pick out. Who's who's the MLB to watch? Who's a, who's kind of on your radar to have a good season? Obviously, I think the Orioles can have another great year. Um, I'll always say the Yankees. I think that the addition of Juan Soto. Uh, I think they yeah, still. As long as you got that dude that can st- swing a tree at, at the baseball, <laughs> you're probably yeah, he's, all right for the Yankees. He's he's a stud, and Aaron Judge has got to stay healthy, and that pitching staff has got to come around, man. That that, that, that got to come around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pitching was was atrocious last year. Disaster! It was a disaster. Carlos Rodon's got to step up this year. He cannot have another year uh, like he had last year in the Bronx, or he's going to find himself uh, run out of town. So, um, man, hmm. I think the Mariners could be good. Uh, obviously, the Astros—they're always going to be good. I'm definitely interested too in the Diamondbacks to see what they put put together after after their season yeah. last year. Uh, an amazing, amazing season. The, uh, the so Rangers was, are going to run it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Rangers. The, I mean, they they didn't make too many big changes either. So I mean, they, yeah. that's the same thing with the Diamondbacks being such a young team. I don't think anybody saw them making it that far. Uh, and so the fact that they were able to go there, uh, that that was that was one thing for sure. Uh, I'm obviously excited for the Red Sox to see what they they put together. Uh, Jeremy, you got any other teams that kind of jump out at you I've, the, the Orioles was definitely one that I think they're going to have a surprisingly good year again yeah the Orioles was one I was going to mention I wish I could say the Minnesota Twins but we all know Byron Box is probably going to hit a wall then the season's just going to completely turn turn to turmoil um we all know that's the truth uh, that's all jokes aside but I mean of course the Dodgers will always be the dominant team um I can see the Astros definitely being another team that's always going to be uh be a thorn in somebody's side. Um, I'm really going to like to see um, between Shohei and what he's going to be doing with the Dodgers. That's always really going to be fun. Then even your Yankees, Blake, That's I think that's really going to be – this is going to be a good season for you guys. Um, I think a lot – there's going to be a lot of good teams that, um, that have a really good season. But if there's one team outside, like I said, the Minnesota Twins that we all know will do – Semi decent in the beginning, then we'll just complete turn of turmoil. Um, just don't be like the, um, just don't be like the Padres, getting completely blown out by the Dodgers opening day, losing fourteen to one. I, I watched the first half, and I think they said it took. I don't know if you watched it, Blake. I think they said the first inning alone took like almost an hour, just to Ugh. put up, just to watch the watch the Dodgers put up a slugfest, and I'm. I told myself if that's how the baseball season is going to go, I'm not even going to watch any baseball this year. <laughs> it's just... it's hard for Minnesota, man. That's a tough it's a tough landing spot for uh, baseball. You know, it's yeah. it's just it's hard to lure a free agency, you know, big time bat or big time arm to say, hey, come to Minnesota, you can play baseball. You know, a lot of guys. You know, you think of the Dodgers and L.A. and, mm-hmm. you know, um, obviously, Padre. yeah, Padre, San Diego, I, I you know. The you, season, it's already getting cold up there in Minnesota. Yeah. Play up there. You know, and, and 
the Yankees in New York, the Mets, you know, Braves in Atlanta with the nice weather and stuff like that. So it's just hard, man. It's hard for the Twins to really get that that talent in there. Yeah, it yeah. definitely is. But I'll yeah, give a props yeah. out to the Minnesota Twins. Their facility is top notch. I mean, oh yeah. Yeah, we took yeah, a tour yeah. of it and we got to go inside. It was really, really, definitely something That's I'll never it. forget. That's yeah, it. It was, it was a lot of fun uh, seeing all of the, you know, the, the clubhouses and stuff like that. That was pretty yeah. cool. Kind of cool. There was the some scenes. players that were there right before getting ready to leave for spring training, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, That's yeah. It. It's uh, MLB season right around the, the corner. Uh, baseball season's here. I mean, it's it's been fun so far watching uh, baseball. Mm-hmm. I've been been keeping up with my Sooners quite a bit, watching them, seeing seeing how their their season unfolds. Yeah. Kind of a kind of like a. I guess the start that you would expect from a team that's kind of right in the middle of the pack, not really at the bottom, but not at the top. So uh, a lot of fun there. Of course, right? When, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, man, that's just that's just fantastic. Just I, I better yeah. take a picture of that. That's definitely going to be something I'll be on the wallpaper. That's for sure. You love to see it. You love to oh, see 100, it. 100%. We were doing so good, too, and then all yeah. of a sudden this just happens. But, Yep, uh, he he just sent me a text, but um, I think Josh is going to try and definitely hop back in, or I don't, I don't 100 percent know what Josh is definitely going to be doing, but I I can guarantee you this upcoming baseball season, Blake, and you can obviously say a whole bunch. It's definitely going to yeah. be a fun year. Then, of course, like you said, your Yankees they're always going to be something. That is my that is my dream is to get up to New York and go see a Yankees game. Uh, I've seen the I've seen the Yankees play, but at Target Field in Minneapolis, so it's yeah. definitely something that. I do want to necessarily try it, but Blake, if there's one MLB stadium that you would love to go to, I kind of think I already know the answer. Where would it be? One that I would really want to go to? Oh, man, that's a great question. That's a great question. That is a great, great question. Uh, I thought it was just like that. (laughs) Man... I do, and, and everybody's going to be like, oh, that's super boring, but I'm a baseball nerd, so it's got to be Dodger Stadium, right? Like, just the history and, uh, you know, the 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 Scully calls and, and everything like that, like just experiencing the Dodger dog and yeah. all of that stuff. Um, but I think... I would love to go see the Mariners facilities and uh and like just getting up to Seattle. I think that's a super cool environment. So uh the the Mariners uh, I think that would be pretty cool. That would definitely be something like I've only seen I've only I've only been inside of two MLB arenas, the old Twins Metro mm-hmm. and of course been a target numerous times and I've never, like I said, I've never been in the facility, but I've drove past where the Houston Astros play when I was down in Texas. That was definitely a sight to see just because I wanted to go to the game because when they were going, it was Battle of Texas. It was the Astros versus the Rangers, but mm-hmm. um, I didn't have the opportunity to come or get get to go. But um, if I had to say the same thing, I would honestly, I'd like to go to San Francisco and, oh, just, yeah. and just go see someone launch a ball over the wall and just see people in the kayaks just storming just trying to get the baseball but i mean there's McC- there's honest- go ahead no no no. mccovey cove is uh one of the it's one of the tops right um another one i was gonna say is wrigley field i left that one off yeah. that uh, i haven't been there my grandfather before he passed away he got to experience wrigley and he always told me that would be a special one. I have gotten to see the Yankees in Yankee Stadium, so mm-hmm. I got to mark that one off the bucket list. I would like to see Fenway. I think that would be really cool. Uh, I've heard from a couple friends that have been up there. Uh, we've had a couple guys from Mobile play for the Red Sox, so I think mm-hmm. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. There's there's definitely too much NBA, M- NBA, MLB stadiums that I would love to go to. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think I definitely might be one of those – those people when I get ready for retirement I think I'm going to try and hit every MLB stadium just because I mean my dad when he was when he was here he was he lived in on the coast in California he always told me that you need to go to it and see it it's yeah. always one thing that you definitely want to experience but guys I think 
Josh is not going to be able to make it back in the night. So <laughs> I think we're definitely going to be closing out the episode. But on behalf of myself and Blake, I, we always appreciate everybody hopping on. And like Josh would always say, go over to every social media that you can see. It's on Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, they, even TikTok, or as Josh knows as TikTok, but I still have to correct it <laughs> once in a while. But um, guys, always make sure to give us a like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That yeah. Now you can be able to join on to our YouTube site and get um, special behind the scenes footage of what we're going to be doing for the episodes and we can definitely be getting those boosted and we can even get back into doing giveaways but outside of that like I said even if you're listening to on Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts or whatever social platform that you listen to just always please and we love to see you guys give us a five star review and make sure to leave us a review just because we love hearing from you guys each day. Okay.